Person extraordinaire, a man of so many talents. I just can't sing his praises enough. Uh, you're far too kind. I am. I know. I'm, I'm off in the shit show, to be quite honest. Uh, <laughs> you and me both. But somehow we make shit happen, don't we? We take that shit and we make a show. The show must go on. The show must go on. <laughs> <laughs> you had asked me a question at the end of the last episode and I forgot it. Oh my gosh. Um, we were talking about um, instinct and trusting your gut. Oh, okay. My question to you is, if you could share with us a moment where you had to take a step back, check in, what is my gut saying here? You know what? I want to trust my gut. And what was the result? Oh, okay. 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 Good or bad. Okay. Which is all still very relative. All right, I'm gonna go with this moment that I trusted my gut, kind of, mostly. Don't but mitigate. Eight years ago, I was working on a feature film as a PA mm -hmm. on Ride Along, working in the art department. Like, oh, my first big film gig. Like, oh, so awesome, so amazing. Uh, fast forward, not fast forward. Also, I decided to start taking Meisner classes at Pension Ouch that very same time. Okay. Now, if you know anything about working on the film, it's you really shouldn't be doing anything but working on a film. Yeah. But there I was, trying to take classes, working 12-hour days, and it came to a head three months into the job where it was like, it was getting to be too much. And I knew I needed to make a decision because I was snappy at everyone, like I was emotional, I lost 10 pounds. Um, and then also, Eddie and I were about to go on a cruise. And so I needed to make a decision. Do we reschedule this cruise? And I feel like I may have told you the story. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. But I needed to make a decision. Number one, do I want to go on this cruise? Do I want to continue working at this job or do I want to go on this cruise and just middle fingers up in the air? Number two, do I want to continue behind the scenes or in front of the camera? Like I was at the beginning of both of things. Like I could have continued behind the camera work and whatever. Or I could continue developing acting. But I realized in that moment, it's like, it's going to be hard to work on both successfully. And I remember Amy McGarry, I had to go pick her up for work one day, mm -hmm. and she was telling me on the car ride, she was like, I, somehow the conversation came up of her want, working in film, and she wanted to be a storyteller and make films. But she got sucked into the behind the scenes stuff of working in the art department and moving up in that ranks, and her dream of making her films kind of got pushed to the wayside. Hmm. And I remember that helping really, me really decide, like, what do I want to do? And it was a matter of trusting my gut of saying, I want to do acting, even though, look, it's not as lucrative as behind the scenes, and it's not, look, it's also, behind the scenes isn't as steady, but it definitely pays more and is a lot more consistent than acting jobs. Um, so for me, it felt like a big leap of, like, saying no to paying jobs and working on a craft that, may or may not pay out, but it's something, it's what I wanted to do, and it's what my passion made. And, and then, as you know with Meisner, you are put through the ringer emotionally. You are put through the ringer emotionally, <laughs> and so there I am after we get back from the Fully cruise. Fully exposed. <laughs> get back from the cruise, and it's like, why did I do this? <laughs> but... Eight years later, like, I'm so glad that I did have the experience in Ride Along, but that I chose acting. Yeah. Like, I focused on acting is a better way to say it. It's not choosing. It's choosing where I was going to focus my attention. All right. What did your gut say? My gut at the time. Do you, do you remember what that voice was? Yeah. It was, do acting. I mean was my gut also saying like, so you are so burnt out from this job and you need a vacation and you need to get away from these people. Um, was my gut also saying that? Yes. But it, my gut was also saying like, you enjoy acting. Like, even though it scares the shit out of you, you enjoy that so much more and it's more rewarding. 
let me ask you this question about um, journey and path and decisions. Um, with those three months of being in the yard department, how has that um, benefited or aided your passion and where you are now? Benefited so much. Um, it gave me a glimpse into how a professional number one art department's run for a major movie network. But not only that, it gave me so much more respect too for people behind the scenes. And not even working as a PA for several years, so like me making it to that position was kinda like, oh I made it to the corner office, like I'm finally I've got it. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm it. Yes, let me toss my hat up in the sky. Um but yeah, I feel like the organization that I learned there in terms of how like behind the scenes are run, how all of the sausage that goes into making a movie from I remember we had one person whose sole job was rights and clearances and all that other stuff, like in the art department, like yeah. getting stuff from different companies and studios and different things like that. One whole person whose job all day long was like we're going to get these products, product yeah. placement and all of that, and then yeah. getting cleared by lawyers, and then saying, like, no, we can't use this in the art department because legal reasons. And yeah. It just, there's so much that I learned in doing that. Yeah, that was a very similar experience I had, too. Tell me more. Okay, let me ask you the exact same questions. Your gut experience, and... But I do want to know about the similar experience you had, too. Sure. Do they um, I and and this actually allowed um, me to transition from being a PA for the producers for this uh, network and for this TV show to becoming a producer and writer um, for one of the segments of the show, which led to me being able to do segments and producing and um, and post producing for for networks. So I was working as a PA um, for for a network and I got paired with the producers. Uh, so I was driving them around. And there's one of the, one of the stories dealt specifically with, you know, this particular actor, sorry, this particular, ugh, this particular mm. one of the uh, uh, stories dealt with uh, this particular character delving into um, her craft as an actor. And they wrote um, the storyline, and they had all these ideas about what acting and learning acting is, and that's a lot of what you see on TV when people take acting classes. And um, my gut was saying that is so, so not the experience that actors really have. Mm, okay. Um, so I was challenged with okay, allow this network and this show to put up this story that gives a false sense to actors on like what this experience is and what the journey is or speak up and because I already knew that I was a working actor and studied actor I'm like listen um, here's what I offer um, these are the experiences that we actually have um, so on and so forth and you know if you guys want some help there I mean I'll be more than glad to do so um, we ended the day and I got a phone call later that evening asking about more information on how we can set up that scene to do that specific thing that I was wow. offering. Wow. Um, I got my first associate producer credit, and those people on that show have um, uh, recommended me for other jobs where I became full producer, um, produced a number of episodes for a series, and um, uh, post-produced episodes as well. So, when it comes to your gut, it is there's some there's all when, whenever there's uh, smoke, there's fire. Right. What is causing that fire? Um, in this industry, we are shunned, especially as people of color. Who? Um, child, honey, boo boo. The LGBTQIA plus uh, community for speaking up and for their. Um, being ramifications, um, losing jobs, as it were, this and a third. Um, but especially, too, for black women who speak up, because mm -hmm. there's that... Oftentimes black women speak up, and then it's like, oh, well, you're just being difficult, and then pushed aside. But yeah. 
for minorities across the board of being viewed as difficult and then losing your truth and all that. Yeah, don't... Mm, losing your truth. Ooh, Jesus. Don't... It goes back to your why. Mm-hmm. And you have got to stand up and stand firm in it. And I, I'm a firm believer in um, providing that space for other people to do that. Going back to the con- that variety of conversation with um, all this LG, Chris, Jay, and Derek, um, that that s- the strength and them not really ever maybe two of them had uh, shoots together before, um, but there is such a collective, a similar experience that each of them had throughout their career, and I promise if we stand up and stand together. Then the um, one went blue. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. If we, how do you feel? Hmm. 